Now that's the little black dots. Just mind you, may alarm. The little black dots that you see on your Snapchat, so that other users can simply discover and scan you with just their smartphone camera. Ganot kasiyple. And that's it. That that's what he sold for. Well, I, I'll let him do the talking about how much he sold that for. Now, with that Snapchat app called Scan, he can now, or he now leads the list of remarkable young Filipinos who have made their mark this early on in life. You know, because of uh, this person, this uh, our beloved speaker, kaya pala na patali yung mga friends sa Snapchat and traveling the world with a purpose that, you know, adventure journalist Garrett G of the uh, social media sensation did Bucket list. The uh, bucket list family. He currently travels, you know, throughout the world full time, full time with this young family of four on a shoestring budget, not even touching his spot money. Grabe yung tra full time traveling. Full time Paano traveling. lahat ng mga youth. Um, Pang yan talaga ang goals ngayon. Hashtag goals Hashtag talaga. Goals. Sabi nga rin niya, girly kanina from UWE, yeah. travel is the <laughs> essence. And of course, Sorry. visiting and promoting local communities. Alright, so without further ado, let us all welcome our third speaker for today. Please give it up for Mr. Gary G. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. 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 Hi Garrett. Thank you for the kind intro. I'm super nervous. I don't know why I'm so nervous right now. I've been in the Philippines for 18 days so far. And one second, I need to sit down. I'm gonna faint. Um, <laughs> Gary, you have a lot of fans here at the Theater. No, you guys are super nice. I have been in the Philippines for about 18 days. And I have absolutely loved my time here in the Philippines. And I feel like I have learned so much from you. And so I really want to give this presentation my best efforts to hopefully help teach you something because of how much I've learned from you. Um, my, uh, <laughs> slowly calming down, still very nervous. I'm going to get to know you first. Please, by raise of hand, um, who here has been to the USA? Not very many people. That's okay. I learned this week that the Philippines is better, so <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Um, who here by raise of hand has Snapchat? Awesome. Uh, who here by raise of hands Instagram and Facebook? Very cool to see. So this is my website, GarrettG.ee. -E. That's my personal website. That's where you can find my Facebook, my Instagram, my Snapchat. And if at any time after this you want to connect with me, through my website you can, uh, you can message me. Um, you guys have beautiful smiles. Everyone smiles really, really well. <laughs> All right. Are you guys going to let me take a picture with you after this? Oh, <laughs> so, I have a YouTube channel, and this little camera captures everything that goes on my YouTube channel. So will you please say hi to my YouTube channel? <laughs> Alright, wave hi for that. <laughs> okay, we'll just put this over here. Um, I'm getting way distracted. Uh, I know, let's go to the next slide, please. All right, that's my family. Right, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they wonderful? So, my sister Maristi, 
me, my little sister Gabrielle, my older sister Christina, my oldest sister Joanna, and my brother Brennan. So we were born in Utah, the state of Utah in the USA, but my mother, she was born here in the Philippines. My dad is Danish and so we are half Filipino. And I, before this, I had never had the chance to explore the Philippines, but I knew it was somewhere inside of me. I knew it was part of me. And so finally, I came here. I've been here for 18 days exploring the Philippines, getting to know you wonderful people, and discovering what is it inside of me that has been longing to come here to the Philippines. And the reason why I was here was a very special project. It was actually kind of a secret project that I finally get to tell you about today at the end of my presentation. So next slide, please. Um, before I came here, I played soccer at my university. And next slide. And at my university, that's where I met my wonderful wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am very, very thankful. Uh, so, my wife, my little girl, her name is Dorothy, and my little boy, by raise of hand, does anyone know the name of my little boy? Manila. <laughs> His name is Manila. So, Alright, let's take it back. So, a lot of students in here. When I was a student in my university, that's where I met this pretty young lady. And I wanted to court her, and I wanted to marry her. <laughs> and, but, at the time, I was so focused on my soccer and my schooling, I didn't have a job. And so there was no way I was gonna able, going to be able to support a new family and marry this beautiful girl if I didn't have a job. And so that was the first stage in my life where I learned this entrepreneurial process that would then forever become part of my life. So next slide, please. This is my very first business. It was called Capital G Design. And basically, I took the only skills I had at the time and I tried to turn them into a business, or I tried to turn them into money. And I knew Photoshop, and I knew some coding, and so I thought, I can take those skills and I can build websites for people. But, I mean, I was young, I didn't have experience, I was just a student, but there was something important that I learned, and that was this, and I think this is very applicable, even if you're a student here in the Philippines, is when you have connection to the internet, the World Wide Web, it's exactly that. WWW World Wide Web means the same internet that I'm using is the same internet that someone in New York or Silicon Valley or here in the Philippines. We all have access to that same internet. And so if I could create a website or a Facebook page and put up my services, I could, in a sense, immediately that quickly create a job and start hopefully making money. So this is how it worked for me was, I started practicing just building like my own website, anything I wanted to design, and then once I got my confidence up, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take these skills and I'm gonna try to design a website for like a family member. So I built a family member's website, and then once I got my confidence up a little bit more, I was like, I wonder if I could do it for like friends or other people I know, and I wonder if they'll pay me. So I remember the first time I got, I asked somebody if I could build their website, and they asked me, well, how much am I, how much am I going to charge them? And I had never had a job before, I had never made money like this before, so I kind of just threw out a number, and I was like, how about you pay me $12 an hour? And they, their answer was like, oh, so you're not very good at designing websites? And I was like, I didn't say that, I just said I'm gonna charge you $12 an hour. And I built their website, they really liked it, and they referred me to a friend, saying, you know, Garrett built my website, maybe he'll do it for you, and that friend said, how much do you charge? 
I was like, well, I'm getting a little bit better. Maybe I should charge you $16 an hour. And he kind of had a similar response. He was like, oh, so you're not very good. And I was like, I don't know. I just charge $16 an hour. But what I found was, as I was getting better and better, um, my confidence was going up and everybody was really happy with the websites I was building them. And so I had more and more business coming my way. And so even though the money wasn't the important part for me, it just kind of became this game and this experiment where somebody would ask, well, how much do you charge? And I was like, uh, $28 an hour? And their same response was like, oh, so you're just kind of a student. You're not like professional yet. And what I found was they were judging me based on how much I was charging. And so then I was like, well, let's just see how this goes. And so the next person would ask, how much do you charge? And I'd say, I charge $100 an hour. And they're like, oh, so you're pretty good? And yeah, I charge $100 an hour, right? <laughs> and then I got to the point where a lot of people were happy with my websites I was building. And so more and more business came. And it was really hard for me to say no. I say yes to everything. It's probably the reason why I'm here in the Philippines. <laughs> uh, and uh, so when more and more business started coming my way, I couldn't say no, but I was just too busy. So I came up with a plan. I was like, you know what? Instead of saying no to them, I'm just going to charge way too much, and they'll say no to me. So the next person comes and is like, well, how much do you charge? And I said, look, I'm really busy. I know other people who can do just as good or maybe an even better job than me, and they'll charge you less. And they're like, well, how much do you charge? I charge $300 an hour. And they'd be like, whoa, you must be really good. <laughs> well, I do charge $300 an hour, right? <laughs> And so they said yes, because they wanted to work with the best. And so <laughs> and I said yes, because I say yes to everything. <laughs> um, and so that was my first like, step into the business world, where I learned that you really can just create your own future. You can create your own job. I learned that the most important part for my industry was just having good skills. Because at the end of the day, whether I was charging $12 an hour, or if I was charging $300 an hour, all that mattered is that they had a website that they were happy with, and that came down to my personal or my personal skills. And so, next slide. It got to a point where I was designing so many websites for other people, but I had all these ideas inside my own head. And so, I wanted to try to take my new skills and design my own website, or this time, design my own app. And so, I had a lot of ideas for apps, but I decided to start off easy and just build a barcode scanner. Because when I got my first smartphone, I saw that there were already like other barcode scanning apps you could download. But some of them were designed poorly or they didn't work that quickly. And so I was like, you know what? I think there should be a better looking faster scanner. And that'll be my first project. It'll just be a side project. It probably won't amount to anything. Probably won't make any money off of it. It'll just be a good practice project. And that's when things got super crazy because me and two of my buddies, we built this app and we put it into the app store. And I remember I went to a party that night and I was literally up on the table telling everyone at the party to download my new app because I was so proud of it. And I was stoked, I, I got 12 people to download my app. And the next morning I go to my two buddies and I was like, guys, don't worry, I got us covered, I got us 12, app, or I got us 12 downloads last night. And they're like, you haven't checked the analytics, have you? And they pulled it up, and on our very first night, we got 2,000 downloads. And then the very next day, it got 5,000 downloads. And the very next day, it got 10,000 downloads. And that's when I learned, like, I'm just one person on the table screaming. But the power of the internet, the same internet that you have access to, that everyone, no matter where they are, if they have connection to the internet, it's all the same World Wide Web, equal playing field. If you build an impressive app, it's available to the entire world. And 5,000 downloads turned into 30,000 a day, 60,000 a day. And I remember very clearly the day that we started getting 73,000 downloads a day. And I remember that because that's about how many seconds there are in a day. And it was crazy that I didn't need to be up uh, on a table at a party. We could just be working hard trying to improve this app and it was still getting a download every single second of the day all around the world. And that's when our lives changed because we were in a very small town in the state of Utah. Nobody knew about us. Nobody knew about our town. And yet we built something special and that got the attention of Google and Facebook. 
and eventually, next slide please, Snapchat. And there came the day, the life-changing day in my life when, um, when I sold my app. It was kind of my baby and it was a sad day to see it go, but I had the opportunity to join something bigger and that was Snapchat. And there's, there's the cool moment in life, I wish everybody could experience this, I'm very grateful that I've had this opportunity, but there's the cool moment in life when you feel like you accomplished everything you were working towards. And you kind of have this freedom where I'm not stressing about money today, I'm not stressing about my schooling, like everything that was constantly pushing me or stressing me out in life just went away. And I think this can be a good or bad turning point in people's lives because when that responsibility and that stress is taken away from you, you have two options, the way I saw it in my mind. Option one is I could just get comfortable. I could stop working, I could relax, I could go on a never ending vacation um, and just kind of be done with it and be comfortable. Because Looking back at how much hard work went into building these apps, I was definitely ready and that was very tempting to just relax. But, I mean, the theme of this, the theme of this day, the theme of this event, and what kept me going every day was the importance to whatever stage you are in life, to make your mark. And that's when I decided, you know what? The success is it's similar to what Jonathan said in his great presentation. It was like, none of this matters. None of this is going to matter if I can't take what is, if I can't take my situation and make something special of it. If I just get comfortable, it might make my life better, but probably is not going to make anyone else's life better. And so my wife and I together, we came up with a plan. Um, can you go to the next slide, please? So. <laughs> so this was our plan, was don't get comfortable. Comfort never was happiness. It might feel comfortable for a little bit, but that's when your life stops. But if you can stay uncomfortable, you can face your fears and keep trying new things, that's when life progresses, that's when life gets better. So, this was our plan. We put aside the money from selling my app. We said, that's untouchable. We're gonna start over. We're gonna go back to being starving students. We're gonna be, go back to as if we had nothing, and we're just gonna come start completely over. And so, I came up with a plan where I had spent days, um, Jonathan would know this well, like if you're in the tech industry, you're gonna spend a lot of time behind your computer, it's not very good for your health. If you become a workaholic, it's not very good for your family. So whatever my next venture was, whatever my next gig was, there were certain things that I knew I wanted to accomplish. I knew I wanted them to be a part of me. And so this was it, is I was trying to create in my mind a job where I could be with my family more, I could focus on my health, in corporate passions of mine like travel and photography. And so I kind of invented this job of an adventure travel journalist. And like the downside is that doesn't really exist. That's not really a real job. The good side is, is in today's world, if you can make it up and if someone's willing to pay you for it, you just invented a job, right? And so that's what we did, is we created an Instagram account Snapchat and YouTube called The Bucket List Family. We sold everything, we locked away our savings, <coughs> and we decided let's set out for an adventure around the world and just see what happens. And it was really cool because what we found was, because our mission as we traveled around the world was to make our mark through service and humanitarian projects and adventures as a family, what we found was a lot of people connected with us around the world because they had similar aspirations. They, they had this, desire in them to connect with people outside their country, to see the world, to learn about different cultures, and to serve others. And so that brings us to today where, next slide please, where we 
now have been on the road traveling full time for two years. Nothing but four pieces of luggage. I wear the same clothes basically every day. You take a picture with me, don't get too close. <laughs> um, but it's just, that's, that's our life now. We invented this new job, we invented this new lifestyle, and we're loving it. It was scary at first, it was very scary to leave behind everything, but I think that's how the world works, that's how the universe works, that if you're willing to put in the hard work and the effort, develop your skills, that final step is go past your comfort zone. If we forget about comfort, take a step into fear, and who knows what amazing stuff might happen. And so now, here I am in the Philippines, part of a secret project. I think I have, next slide please. Here's a few teaser images, because here is the very cool thing that I could not be more stoked on, is I have partnered with ABS CBN International, and together we are going to create a TV show, a web series, and other visual content. And the most exciting part of all is that just means I'm going to be in the Philippines a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. So, one more time, I have to just say. Thank you so much for having me here in your country. Thank you so much for your kindness. I have loved my time here. I'm already excited for the day that I could get to come back. I really hope that you'll connect with me. Here's my website where you can find me. Please keep in touch. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much, Garrett. But uh, don't leave the stage just yet. Stay with me. Yes. <laughs> Our other speakers for our question and answer portion.